Okay. Hello, everyone. This is another watercolor class. Today, we will also need a black pen. So any marker pen or ballpoint pen, anything dark, even a pencil is okay, but pen is best. So go find one. Sometimes I know we don't have pens, but we will need a pen today. And that is for adding the details that you see here on our reference. And it needs and, to be black, right? Yeah. Well, it can be uh, any other color, but black works best because we want those shadows. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need the pen, not right now, but you will also need your brushes. So I have just three, a round brush, a flat shader, and also a very small brush. So just the same as usual, we need three brushes, and then you also need some scrap paper. Extra printer paper is okay too. Of course, need your paint. So today we have black, red, yellow, blue, and green. And looking at this picture, we already kind of know what colors we need. We need quite a lot of green yellow and maybe some red and blues to make these gray shadows down at the bottom. So I'll give everyone just a second to take pictures or screenshots. In the meantime, we can start to mix our colors. Can I ask a question? The black pen can that be a ball pen or has to be a, a, dark, um, a dark pencil? And Any dark you talk pen. about when you talk about shadows, so I thought it had to be something that we had we can smash. Um, okay, a ball pen should be okay. Yeah, ball pen is good. Okay, thank you. Oops. Okay. Round brush. Yeah, round brush, small brush, and flat brush. Flat brush. Okay, I will put this down a little bit so it's going to get smaller. Let's start with mixing our paint first. So in our pan, if you have a lid or palette, we're going to make our first color. The first color will just be green. We're making a pool of green. So going in, taking some green, moving it out. And you want it to be kind of dark. But also you need enough of it so it's not going to be sticky. So just keep adding water and green paint. Can show you on the test paper what it looks like. It's quite light. So we can continue adding some more. So we're just making the first color. You need some green and a lot of water. It's a little bit darker now. And of course, with painting, anything real, like real trees, the green is actually not that green. There's a lot of yellow, a lot of yellow colors, ye yellow tones in here. So we're also going to, of course, add some yellow. So now we have a yellow green. So that is our first color, just a light yellow green. And our second color, 
that we need to make is some blue. So take some blue paint, put it right next to the green and just add some water. So as we already know, there are warm and cool colors. So this blue would be considered one of the warmer blues because it has some green in it. We're going to make a cool blue as well. So we're going to take some blue, create a second pool of color. So this is the warm one, it's kind of green. And we also need a cool one. And then the cool one will add some red to make it a little bit purple, like indigo. So for the cool blue, you need red and blue. But make sure you don't add too much red because it will look more purple than you want. So you can kind of tell that the difference between these two blues, I would add a little bit more red just to mine. This color is good for any shading on white surfaces in daylight. So, so far we only mixed green, a yellow green, warm blue, which is just blue, and cool blue, which is blue and a little bit of red. And the fourth color that we need is this brown color, which is essentially just dark orange. So I'm gonna put the brown in this slot. You will need red. And I'm making sure that I wash my brush whenever I switch colors just so I don't make too much of a mess. So you need red and you also need some yellow. All right, and now I'm going to just muddy this down, which is just me adding random colors, mostly blue and some red to make this a darker orange, so brown. You can also just add black, but I think we can play around with the colors today. So I just added some blue and some red. It's a little too brown or a little too green. So I'm going to add back some yellow and red. kind of gray brown, so that is fine. Just 
excuse me, I'd like to see how do you do the brown? Okay, the brown, you need all of the colors mixed together in almost an equal ratio. So you need red, yellow, so you make orange. And then you just need a little bit of everything else. So first I just make orange and then I start to add some of the other colors or you can just add black to your brown. I'll show you what that looks like. Sorry, add black to your orange. So I'm making some orange and add a little bit of black. And there you have some brown. No, I got it, Jane. Thank you. Got it? Good. Oh, and one last very important color that we need is just pure yellow. So you're just going to take some clean water as clean as you can, because I find if you use, like my water is already very dark. If I mix the yellow with this water, it becomes gray. So I'm going to get some clean water, just some fresh water and make a, I'm going to need some yellow as well. Just as pure as you can get it. If it's not entirely yellow like mine, you can see there's some green still in there. That is fine. Okay, so these are, are our main colors. If you need any, if you need me to go back and mix some new colors, just let me know. So to go over again, we have cool blue. So this is just blue and red. You need some regular blue or just warm blue. So two blues. Uh, a little bit of a lime yellow green. And these two are just brown or grays. And when I say brown, it's just something that's a muddy color. So we can create these shadows. And if your brown or gray looks a little purple or a little bit green, that is okay. It'll make all our images look different. So that's good. And then the last color you need is just yellow. Okay. So those are our colors. I'm going to put this off to the side here. Before we even start with the painting, uh, I like to do some warm ups. Just so my hands are used to the paint and the feeling of the brush. So I get a scrap sheet of paper, just a separate sheet. Take any color. I'm going to take the brown. And we're going to practice doing these shadows. So these tree leaf shadows on the walls. So I'm taking the round brush and just holding it lightly above the paper and kind of drawing my way down the page, creating these natural holes where there's no paint. And that is what helps us get the tree shadow on wall effect. And you really, you can also switch to the side 
of your brush. Just play around with the angle of your brush. See what kind of shapes you like. So you can do right on top or you can prefer on the side. And you can also switch color halfway. Maybe there's something blue reflecting in the shadow as well. So that's why the color changed. You can play around with this for a little bit. It's good to just get your hand warmed up before we do any actual painting. And they don't all have to be connected. Your, your blue is a little bit lighter than the color that we have. How do you make it lighter? Just add white? Add some water. So okay. dilute it. Yeah. Dilute, okay. One thing, you can add white. The only problem with that is sometimes watercolor white is, is very mysterious. It sometimes does lighten the color, but I just find it to be a little bit too pasty. Makes it feel like acrylic paint. I don't know, I've never really tried with white. I just add more water and then layer in my colors because it is a transparent medium. So this, this is our finished practice sheet. You can just put it to the side because we will begin with our actual painting. So here I have just a regular sheet of watercolor paper. Mixed media is good too. I'm going to start by doing the sky. So if you look at our picture, there's a lot of areas that are covered by leaves, right? But this white area, it's good to give it some color so it's not, it doesn't feel empty. So looking at our reference, we also need to pay attention to where the building is. So when we're painting our sky, we need to drag our water around this building. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna take my clean water and we'll do a wash, a wash for the background, for the sky. So just take your largest flat brush, get some clean water, and you want to add the water around the building. So I'll just show you guys first. I think it's easier if I just demonstrate it really quickly. Kind of see where I'm going with this. So leave the where the building is going to be, leave it dry. Because when we do the wash, we don't want the blue getting into the building. And for the edges, you can just leave them because they will be covered by the leaves. I am going to take some water away from this corner because that's where the other house is, or the roof is. Just taking my paper towel and taking the water away. So if I lift it to the light, you can see that I've only made it shiny in the areas where there is going to be sky. So this part is dry. and you want it to be kind of shiny. Now I'll take some, just a little bit of blue 
and drop it in. You can see it just blooming. You can spread it out. You can do one large swath. It's just going to be a light blue. And leave some of these pale areas, empty areas. These can be clouds. You can also play with the color, the hue of the sky. So take some cool blue, add some cool blue. You can see it's a little bit purple. And just dab it on. Don't move it around too much. Because it will spread by itself and you want that natural effect. And now I'm just waiting for the color to dry, which means we're not going to touch it until it has completely dried. In the meantime, however, we can start working on the bottom areas. So starting with the bottom of the building and also a little bit of the doors and these windows. So again, with my flat brush, now we're drawing with our paint. This is more of a painting technique, the wash. Now we're just going to use our watercolor paint and use it as if we're sketching. So I'm, go I'm going in with the brown gray. This is a very good sketching tone, sketching color. And I'm just going to start with the bottom, the base of the building. What you want is quite a natural flat line just across the bottom. I like to do this when my paper is flat on the table. And then if you want a really straight line, you put your pinky or any finger at the edge of the paper. Kind of like this. So it's kind of, you're forming your own ruler. That we get the same height all the way across. Okay, and we don't want this to dry too much. So go back into your brown or gray or whatever color you're using. And you can start shaping in the doors. So one of my doors, they're kind of evenly spaced from the middle.
doesn't have to be perfect because later we will use the pen to straighten out any edges or to add detail. So this is just the blocking in of the main shapes. I think I made that door a little bit too big, which is okay. I'll make this door smaller. It's about halfway actually. All right, and let's go, just keep using the same color. And we're going to add some shadows to the left of these doors. So imagine this is the door, there's a frame. And then outside of that frame, there's the frame's shadow. So I'm going to leave a little bit of white space. Just be a very natural shape. It does not have to be exactly like this. And on this building, there's also this little patterning at the bottom, if you can see it, kind of like just an extra few lines. So we're going to include that as well. Now I'm going to do the archways above the door. So the doors have some sort of decoration on top of it, which is this arch. And it's kind of like a leaf shape. So I'm going in the middle. And this side is larger because that's a shadow. The light source is coming in from this way. Then on the left side of the outside of the arch, you can also add another shadow. I'm just adding shadows on mostly on the left side to indicate that the light is coming in from the right.
and do the same for this door as well. So I'm just holding the brush at the angle of the left edge. Okay, and the next elements we're going to add are these circular windows. On the first reference here, there's actually a lot of space between the door and the roof. However, I accidentally made my door too big. So I'm going to make the windows a little bit smaller just to accommodate this new height. So I'm just drawing the circle in for the middle of the window. And then I'm going to make a lighter shade of the brown. So just add more water. To dilute it. I'm just going to go carefully around. The outer edge. To create that shadow. And there's also a cross for this window design. So basically there's lines on all four directions. Okay, and I am still waiting for the sky to dry. As you can see, it's still wet, which means I'm gonna work somewhere else for now. And I'm going to, for my next step, fill in a light yellow wash at the bottom on the ground. So I'm gonna take some water 
and do a wash at the bottom. And add some yellow and also some green. We're going to keep this one pretty light, just like the sky. Be careful not to add too much pigment all at once. Also adding some blue on this side, just for fun. I think my sky is mostly dry now, which means we can start with the roof of the building, which is quite an important part of this image because in any painting, when there's a line cutting across the page, it is a point of interest. So I am going to take my same flat brush. If you're, wait, if you're, sky is still wet, I would recommend waiting a little bit more. But if you're impatient like me, you can just take a paper towel and just dry it off. It won't make that much of a difference. So my roof is also going to be done in the same brown color. Still sketching. I'm using a flat brush and then Paying attention to where the center 
of this. It honestly doesn't matter, but it does look nice when everything is stacked right on top of each other. It's a little too high. So just right here, just let the edge of the brush help guide you. To the edge of this building as well. It's very important to not have too much paint on your brush when you're doing this part. And I think for this edge, I'm going to just let it slide off. And this little extra part is actually a bell tower. If you can see, there's a tiny bell in the middle here. So I'm going to leave a little bit of space for that. And then continue this roof across. Just added another little ridge or line here just to make the architecture more interesting to look at. You can also go back at the doors and just darken this ridge as well. Then I'm going to add the actual doorway, which is the darkest part of this image. See, I'm leaving this a little bit of empty space. That's just for 
uh, a threshold that I decided to add. So it's just, you can imagine it's another piece of wood. Okay, now let's add a little bit of color to our sketch. So right now we just have what's called an underpainting. This is the first layer of a sketch layer. So there's not too many details. Now we're going to add color to these shapes. So for the windows, I'm gonna add some yellow. I think that would be a good color. So taking a light wash of yellow, I'm just gonna go and make sure your sketch is dry. Just going over top, you can barely see it, but it does add a little bit of color, which is quite nice. Can leave some areas white for the impression of sunlight. You know, what? I'm gonna continue the same color for the door archway as well. So the frame of the door are also going to be yellow. And I'm gonna add a little bit, mostly in the shadows. And add more water if you feel that this tint is too dark. This just helps the different structures stand out from the white wall. So the door and the back, the white wall don't look the same. For this one, I might make it a little bit red. So more of an orange color. So when the paint is still wet, one thing you can always do is just add different colors and watch them blend, watch them become different colors.
Make sure you keep your light, your paint very light. Because right now we're just tinting the sketch. Kind of like how you, you add color to a photograph. So now I'm just going back into the windows and adding a deeper shadow. This You can add this to any part of the painting that you feel like might need a darker shadow. But anyways, we're going to just let this sit and let it dry because next step, we're going to start adding these tree shadows. Okay, and I think um, most of it is dry. Actually, it's not that dry yet. But I'm just going to dab it away with my paper towel. For this step, it's not too bad if the colors melt or blend or bleed into each other. So what you're going to do you're going to need a round brush for this step. So any large round tip brush is good. I'm using a size eight. It's good if it's still pretty large because if you use a very small brush like this, it'll take too long. So I'm going to take just a little bit of water, make sure the brush is wet. 
And unlike the wash, we're just gonna take our colors and immediately put it on the paper. Um, I'm going to use this brown gray, but I will also add some of this blue to create a cooler gray. See the kind of color we want. It's kind of like a cooler gray. So this is our original color by adding some brown or sorry, some blue, we can make it a cooler gray. And make sure you always have some other colors on the side. So some green or yellow. So you can switch up the color within the shadows. And without further ado, let's just start. You can just start wherever you want. I like to start near the top and work my way down and do some of these natural shapes. You can go over the other parts of the painting that have already been painted. Make sure to leave some space in between. So You can also switch up the size of each shadow. So some of them might be small, some of them might be larger. Make sure you never let the color dry up too, too much before. Basically just don't let the color sit for too long. Just keep, always keep moving the paint around. Don't forget to add some of it up here in the bell tower as well. Take some more blue and just make this a little bit more cooler.
And we're going to do the same for the ground as well. The gray, the shadow color for the ground needs to be a little bit darker. So that means just use less water. I'm going to use the same gray, but make a little bit more of it. So add some blue. Add some red. And some yellow. That could be a little bit darker. Well, needs a little bit more green. That's pretty good. So just a dark gray. You're going to do the same technique for the bottom. However, um, I think, I think the shadows go the other way. So the trees are coming down onto the roof, but on the floor, it's kind of like converging. I'm gonna switch up my direction and go to the upper left corner this time. And because they're on the floor, the shadows are a little bit flatter. Make sure you leave some white spaces in between as well. Those are just as important as the shadows. You can also add some color here and there.
Okay, and the next step is most of this is pretty much done, except for the trees. And of course, we still need to add the lines. So the next step is to use our round brush and add some trees. So there's some trees up here and the, just behind the house. So the ones behind the house or right on top of it are this kind of a lighter green. And the trees in the front have a darker shadow to them. So we're gonna do the back, the light trees first. So take some of your green. I'm going to add some red, just a little bit to tone down the saturation. It's kind of a gray green now, you can see. You can add more yellow if you feel. But just go ahead and take the tip of the brush and add little dots. And then connect them. It's kind of like how we did the lilacs. There's no pattern this time, it's just whatever you think suits the shape of the tree. And on the right side here, I think it's a little bit empty. What I'm going to add are some uh, pine trees. So just um, their color is a little bit more of a cooler green. So I'm going to add some green and also some blue. and some red as well. So just make a darker, cooler green. And while the paint is still wet, add some pine trees. And we already know if you live in Calgary, they just are everywhere. These spruce trees and pine trees and they have very distinct pattern to them. It's kind of like a toothbrush. So just keep your strokes kind of spiky. Okay, and now we're going to do 
the darker tree that's kind of in the front. And for that, you just need to add some black to your green. You almost want to get to kind of a black color, but it's still green toned. So kind of over here. It's a very, very dark green. This one do the same technique. Make sure your dots are a little bit bigger because this tree is in front, which means the leaves are bigger. Add some water to make it more runny. And it's very important to leave quite a lot of this white space in between to help frame the picture better. So try not to fill up the whole sky with leaves. We still want to keep this empty area. There are also some leaves that are hanging above and you, where you can see the branches. So we're gonna add that as well. And keep these leaves pretty spread out. And going into the brown, you can use your very small brush for this, but um, I'm just going to add a branch, a few branches actually, just to connect these leaves. And on this side, I'm going to darken the leaves just a little bit more. So that means adding another layer.
but it won't over won't be over the same areas. I'm just trying to add another layer of darker leaves. And the trees are mostly done. We just have to wait for them to dry. While we're waiting, before we even do the marker or the pen, I just want to darken this floor a little bit, but not by adding anything. I just want to add some leaves. So I'm making orange, red and yellow, and adding some of these other colors just to add to make it darker. I'm also going to add some green. So just create kind of like a um, fallen leaf color, kind of like a gray brown. And just add some of these little dots on the floor. and then just stab at it with a paper towel so they're not too dark. Okay, and on to the last step, which is the marker or pen. So if you don't have a pen, go grab one, or if you don't have a pen at all, you can just use maybe a dark pencil crayon. I recommend using a marker pen, so an ink pen. Ballpoint is okay, but when you tilt the paper, sometimes you can see it's kind of shiny because the ballpoint is oil-based. So if you have any water-based markers, Please get one right now. And looking at our current painting, there's not much definition to it. So it's just kind of one tone. The marker will really help bring out these, 
the structure a bit more. So I'm just going to outline, like you can see in this picture, the roof is outlined just very roughly. Add some of the dark ink. And if you don't have a marker and you want to still want to try this, just use black watercolor or ink or even acrylic paint. And depending on the size of your painting, you might also want to use a bigger or smaller brush or a smaller pen. You don't want to outline everything. I'm just outlining the areas that are the darkest. So especially under the roof, in the little corners where the light cannot reach. It's kind of like you're drawing in the paint. Here I'm adding the little bell. For the window, I'm actually going to use some black paint to darken it a little bit more. Same with this one. I'm also going to darken this doorway. So using my flat brush because the door is more linear. Take some black. Add it to the gray and just quite dark. It's good because it makes the image feel like it has more depth. You can also just do this with a pen, but it takes more time because you have to color it in. I just use paint because it is faster. For this door, I'm still going to make it not too dark but I will darken it. This one looks more like it's open, like a door that's been opened. And this one looks like just, you can see the door itself. All right, and back to the windows with the marker or your pen. I'm going to just outline. This window over here and the pattern is kind of like, it's got grooves 
on the top and bottom, left and right. Same with this one. Make sure the lines, whenever, if you're sketching with your pen, keep the left side a little bit darker because it helps um, helps the fact that the light is coming in from the right. So obviously the shadows on the left are going to be darker. And just continue outlining the doorway and that will be the last of it. That's a little shadow in this corner. Really, it's kind of like we're just shading with a pencil. Just really keeping the lines loose, very organic. And I think that should be, I think that should be it. So our project today is complete. If you want, you can also sign your name at the bottom.
just to balance the picture if you want 